Hello, and welcome to the NK Day Day Podcast. I am your chairman, Burgo Bro, and today we are going to talk about a variety of issues, and our guests for this week are Soviet Empire USSR. Hello. SPQR. Skyrim. Red Bull Kid. Hey, up, ducks. And Unholy Night 800. Salutations. And finally, Caleb, who is going to remain silent for some reason. Oh yeah, his mic doesn't work, but he, apparently he said Sy- Skyrim can suck his penis. Yes. All okay. words to that effect. Fuck it. Just keep that on record. <laughs> he yeah, didn't cor- like currently um, Sentry is sort, of, is sort of angry, I think, for that. But yes, yeah, Skyrim Burger. I don't know. I'm not, I, the game hasn't come out yet, so I can't really judge it. Anyways, we're this week we're going to be talking about a uh, a variety of current issue hot button issues such as the Occupy movements, a little bit more of an obscure uh, issue like such, such as monarchy, the recently wrapped up uh, Libyan Libyan civil war, and what the uh, future holds for the country and uh, possibly even international politics. We're also going to elaborate more on like the uh, Middle Eastern politics, uh, probably focusing on the Arab Spring, um, Greece. Greece is also a huge issue, and a bit more of a lesser-known topic is the possibility of an Iran war, which is apparently imminent. So, shall we begin? Yay, we can all die. <laughs> Hold on, there's a car I can't hear. Carry on. Okay, what, what, what is whoever is saying in the chat? I'm not... I don't uh, know, Caleb and Sindri are having an argument over Skyrim, so we'll just carry okay, on. Okay, I'll pwn you, Will. Uh, where the fuck do you live, bitch? <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> as the chairman, I'm going to have to um, encourage this fight to escalate, and I'm going to declare that this fight can only be solved in a gentleman's manner. Pistols at dawn. I know, <laughs> we have racist slang. It's too many it's only, slang. It's only responsible. It's only, it's only, hey, I'm the chairman. I have to encourage the responsible thing, which would be the honorable thing. Pistols at, su- at dawn. Someone's going to die. <laughs> uh, I think it would be Sinji. I mean, if you look at Caleb's picture, he looks like he'd be more honorable, man. Hey, I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are we talking about? I've forgotten. Oh, um, our first topic for today, uh, before we stray too far off topic about dueling and all that good stuff, is the Occupy movement. So, why don't we give, let's let Un- Unholy Knight start off the, uh, discussion. Unholy? What? You need You're to start starting this discussion. discussion. What, what do you want me to say for? The Occupy Movement. The Occupy God, Movement. weren't you listening? Why me? Why can't you just ask Soviet? <laughs> okay, fine. Soviet Empire, USSR, go ahead and talk about the Occupy movements. Okay, um, first things first. Um, <clears throat> if you guys don't know about, if anyone's like not catching up about the whole Occupy movements around the world, let's just say the demonstrations or the Occupy movements actual started in New York City, um, which, which, which is most notably called, referred to as Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street, basically people, the 99%, if you want to call them that, uh, are protesting against corporate greed and all this fancy stuff. The 1%. And, and the 1%, which are the rich cats and capitalists, whatever. So, <coughs> uh, basically, it's gone on for about a month or two now, I believe. It was kind of a small group, not a small, uh, it wasn't that much of uh, headlines because the media wasn't... Uh, Showing these movements because I kind much of, of a headline in Britain, well, mm. England. Oh no, <laughs> but it, it's inspired uh, many other movements to rise up across the world and other occupations, and it's uh, it's a global matter now. It's it's a global issue, occupations, but uh, basically, um, it's it's still escalating. It's uh, it's staying strong, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's getting more popularity. And so, there you go. So, anyone else want to add anything to that? Um, 
I just want to uh, bring up uh, something that I've uh, noticed. Uh, the it seemed to have like a massive uh, cultural influence uh, on young people in our society. For example, uh, at my uh, university, uh, the um, student unions are organizing Occupy style movements to. Uh, um, they want to. They're they're proposing uh, to march on uh, our. Uh, on the provincial governments if they do not lower tuition fees like they promised in the recent election. So they're trying to keep our uh, government accountable to um, these issues by um, using using the same style as the Occupy movements. And another yeah. example uh, coming from my brother is that apparently um, my old high school apparently went all totalitarian on us. <laughs> and... Um, they're actually putting limits to how many times you can use the washroom every um, every year to like something like eighteen times per year. You're all, you can use the washroom. The washroom right. so, in what? Wow. Like I mean, going to the bathroom, like taking a piss or shit. Eighteen and times you're allowed, a like, year. Five minutes. Eighteen times a year, five minutes per use, which is completely ridiculous. I've taken twenty minute shits at school before. <laughs> You do right? that at school. Honestly, I don't know whether it's just different in culture, but like I think the etiquette at our school is you don't go for. Well, you're not having shit at school. You well, do, I mean, try not to go to the toilet school because the toilets, the school toilets are horrible. Yeah. Well, yeah, school toilets are like I mean, there's people can't uh, inside the toilet that like I mean they would use them. Anyways. Uh-huh. Yeah. As the, I, I think I should, we, I digress. Like, they're, the schools are kind of like saying, hey, we don't like this. Um, students are starting to use the same kind of Occupy style uh, movement, and it's actually gaining a lot of popularity in my old school. And I'm seeing it's having a massive cultural impact, is what I'm trying to get at, without talking about taking a shit more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, does someone else want to ha- want to add something to that? Uh yeah, I think it's mine. Yeah, I'll, I'll first of all I'll speak. Of, yeah, first of all I'll speak on behalf of Caleb. First of all, he says that the 99% are bitch niggers. After that, he says, uh, "quote The 99% are a bunch of whiny bitch teenagers who get butt hurt because they lost their job. Seriously, they should just fuck off and die. They deserve um, to get beaten down by." Yeah, K- Caleb is right wing here, I think. Yeah, I would like to. Like, uh, I would like to take a very at a tyrannical kid. attitude once again. Hang on, I'd like to um, provide a rebuttal to uh, Caleb in uh, saying I can't I can't find work. I mean, I'm I'm educated, I'm uh, well mannered, I'm have a good work ethic, and I'm having as much difficulty as the next guy or the guy with a uh, college degree or someone uh, someone in the factories like unemployment's on the rise right now because we're going into another global uh, kind of global economic downturn so I mean I mean what I mean I don't 100 percent agree with I mean I acknowledge the cultural influence of the uh, occupy movement I don't exactly I'm, I'll, I'll get into my the uh, mo- I'll talk about the mo- motives a little later because I don't 100 percent agree with it but um you know, what else are these people going to do? They're jobless. They've been jobless for, like, what, this recession's lasted since 2008. Some of these people have been ha- – have not had work for that long. So what else are they going to do? They're going to – when you're when you're out every day finding a job and you're seeing, like, all this corruption and the bailouts and all that stuff, well, what are you going to think? Right? Yeah, like, what are these bailouts, about bailouts actually doing for the normal average person? Because, really, we haven't really noticed any difference from when, like – um, just example here, when Northern Rock were going down, were going down, we had no difference then. I mean, we do well, our family are doing all right, but it's like, I mean, my parents are working in the job centre, so I mean, it's okay. pretty all right. I'm just right. gonna, I'm just gonna say, like, what if we didn't bail out these companies? Like, we would have had an even bigger economic disaster. Like, if the banks failed, how, how do they know though? How do they know that the country wouldn't just, you know, collapse quietly on its own and not you know? Bother anyone. Some of these well, entities. If we let a bank collapse, like I mean, you have my everyone has their money inside the banks, right? And if that collapses, everyone's money just evaporates instantly. All your savings is gone. Yeah, but my bank didn't go down. I couldn't really give it it's down about other people's banks. But then that's probably the capitalist like sort of system on my impressionable young mind. 
end of the day, I couldn't really... I mean, it was, like, other people's money. Yeah, but it's our money for all, for, like, the fewer people's money. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Mm-hmm. Somebody well, I, I, I have my... I have, I have, go ahead, sorry. Oh, thanks. Um, All I know is I'm playing somebody's, uh, final it, it's hard. Some, some of these final sort of financial institutions that get bailed out, some of these companies that shouldn't really get bailed out, they've got enough money. They in, 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 in the day, fail. At the end of the day, these institutions and entities have... They're basically going to be bailed out by our by money. Uh, basically, our tax money, uh, whatever. The taxpayers are bailing out these... Wall Street or whatever. These are criminals inside Wall Street. Not, I'm not saying everyone in Wall Street is a criminal, croony, whatever. Oh, Blake. Now, what if we let General Motors collapse? I mean, those are thousands of jobs in uh, my province in uh, Canada, Ontario, would be lost. Lots of jobs in the United States would be lost. Mm. Lots I mean, of jobs in the, the, the company was I mean, corrupt, but like now it's back on track. Just, to just right. It, we we our unemployment is nearing that of Germany after the First World War, and we have a smaller population. I think. Oh no, yeah, we might I have think... about an equal population, but ours is nearing that. Uh, and sorry, I'm just trying to take us more right wing. I mean, it shows you what really is happening. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. for Vini, but I think the, the impl- unemployment for Germany in World War after World War One was about thirty percent. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't thirty percent. Okay, I uh, people, people I in Germany was, were lined up for that. Sex. It was. I mean, was our economy is bad right now, but in Germany, uh, people were lined like after the after the First World War, people were lined up for. Uh, well, the, yeah, but the thing is, the between soup. our sort of systems and their systems, they didn't really have like um, like sort of um, like welfare. They didn't have a welfare state at the end of the day. I mean, we mm. do. Well, they barely had a functioning uh, government. They were having, they were dealing with uh, various uprisings from uh, both Spot left wing and uh, oh, extreme left, mind. extreme light right groups, and even keep um, in mind it was hyperinflation. That they were dealing with basically yeah, yeah, but, uh, hyperinflation. Yeah, well, yeah. The economy yeah. uprising. Well, that. They couldn't really invest in more welfare. And uh, my point, my point is, uh, Germany after World War One had a higher unemployment. Than Britain has now. Britain has under ten percent unemployment. Yeah, that's true. And that's not as bad as Germany. That's far from. Well, it's still, America's yeah, pretty bad. Like, I mean, our times are. What's America's unemployment? It's uh, around nine percent. or ten percent. Okay, I thought it was much more high than that, but hey, um, it's not, it's only a crease. It's obvious, but well, yeah. The thing is, um. We've been in a recession, or, well, not recession, technically not a recession, but, like, right. an economic turmoil for a long time. Mm. The question is, um, they're looking at the, I think, historically, the United States was able to recover itself using uh, using various stimulus uh, methods, and then ultimately... Are we, are we talking about after um, the Wall Street crash of, like, 1929 or before? Yeah, we're, we're looking at things in a historical perspective. I'm, uh, uh, the, United States current, the United States current unemployment is 9%, which is lower, this, which is, like, one of the lowest points in the last uh, three years, since, yeah. like, the beginning of July, oh nine. So people, um, well, we can talk about, like, a, um, unem- well, unemployment, but, like, we're, I'm thinking, like, right now, the United States back in the um, 30s seemed to have um, resources to draw upon or, like, methods to draw upon to, re- to uh, kind of bring the country back on track. But then, of course, there was, there was, it was followed by a catastrophic war, which um, basically employed the entire country in military and industrial sectors. But I digress. But um, <laughs> the, the question is now, like... Um, I'm looking at the United States and how they kind of have a very, as having a very dysfunctional, disunified government. Like, I mean, President Obama has 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 his own in his uh, in his uh, I guess advisors have it, have their own strategy on bringing their country back on track. Yet the Republicans in really, the they're, 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 they're not sense, really trying to get it back on track. They're just trying to stop losing the money as quickly as they are. Well, no, they have, like, Obama has a jobs plan. It's, when you have, like, say, a, when he's calling something a jobs plan, 
it means he wants to bring the country back on track in terms of employment. Once you get the employment back, you start you can start making you know he pop he can it brings the economy back on track because people are buying stuff. The government gets more money because because uh, they can tax everything people buy, obviously. So um, the Republicans, for whatever reason, are blocking vital stimulus. Yeah. So it's kind of showing that the country, the United States, which I see, I I, I see the as kind of one of the uh, two focal points for the economic t- turmoil. Um, it seems we have a crippling disability to rapidly um, to rapidly solve the unemployment issue or the global turmoil. Now the second focal point of it is of course Europe, but we're going to talk about that once we talk about Greece. So yeah. I still I still don't understand was, the Tea Party. So one of their policies is they don't want any taxes. Am I understanding this no right? No taxation. My name is Strutter. Oh, God, please. Look well, at the chat. We'll see how taxes. many times we digress. Do, do they, do, 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 but really, is, is that actually one of their policies, or is that just, like, nothing? One of their policies? Well, I don't think I... This, I strongly disagree with the uh, Tea Party movements. Um, I do believe in a strong, also strong I like, I like how the other side tried to come up with the coffee party, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, I was actually, they actually, I was actually did, thinking, which, we should make a coffee party. <laughs> no, 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 they actually did, though. That's, that's the thing. They actually made like a rival party called the Coffee Party. Well, I was actually kind of um, thinking about William Spencer's or Stalin's, as we kind of um, normally call him, thinking that it's coffee cast. I was thinking, you know, he's more of a left wing individual, and the uh, Tea Party is very right wing movements, and yeah, their tea, Stalin's coffee, very diverse ass yeah. coffee party. So, well, according to Stalin's political compass, he was minus ten when it came to the left, so he's maximum left. So that yeah. really makes sense. It's no secret that he's a very left-wing individual. Mm. I'm myself a more of a, I'm very, I'm very close to the center, but slightly to the left. Kind of like sort of British politics, then. Yeah, Burgrove was a right-wing liberal. Hmm. I'm not. No, I'm more left-wing. I believe in social programs, but yes, I'll liberals, are, liberals are on the right. You should listen to Europe. Yeah, Europe's always the, 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 right. The, no, but yeah. No, but it's more like a Brit- British politics because at the end of the day, our centre is more to the left. It's like Germany's traditional centre was more to the right. Mm. Oh well. Anyway, we have probably digressed a lot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so the, well, I mean, the occupation movement. Yeah, I we, haven't. We're talking about the occupation yet. movement. That like it was. I thought that was kind of an important topic to kind of act as the economy is is very. Is very is I guess the driving force for this Occupy movement. So why don't we talk about something else about the Occupy movement? Um, I oh, can I, I have some ideas? Um, did you re- recently see any? Uh, I mean, like, how does the police, like the authority, there's a bit, a bit more. They seem to act um, really aggressively like to against see. these these I'd protesters. Like I uh, would okay. Let's let a so basically. Nice. I would like to state that I was in Rome about two days after they had their Occupy thing, and uh, it, it, it looked like a very dangerous place. I saw military police everywhere, and I saw a big generally police everywhere, military police about around every corner. And then when uh, Ferro Squad was going somewhere where uh, there was like six military police, when the army was in the city, uh, it was generally a very very uh, secure place. Like more like a, okay. a martial law. I, would, I, really need to, I, th- I really think I need to, to point out that, okay, yeah, militarized police, they look scary on paper, but when you, but look at what's happening in Syria. Those guys, those guys are getting shot by the uh, army. They're being fired upon by tanks. You see that happening in the yeah. West? No. no. It's no. the thing that separates us, the fact that we are brutal in a light-handed way. I mean, we only throw flashbangs into crowds of unarmed civilians, or they shell them. Like yeah. 
we we might we might injure them over a time like a period of time, but they will injure them straight away to a lot of force. Yeah, well, it depends on what Western nation you're on about. I mean, in Britain, you'll never see a tear gas fired. But please, exactly. Please, are very lenient. Very lenient, please here. Yeah, not I mean, lenient, but I mean, we didn't overreact like the Americans. Well, well, no, we but get on with it, it depends really. Like, uh, I mean, like if. Oh, any freaking occupations here in um, London. I mean, the police even talk to protesters about what, why they're protesting exactly, uh, the police stuff police like that. But the, the you, in America, in contrast, in America, the police are not even, you know, brutality, really. The, the methods are brutality and it's the protesters. And I don't know, this is all in the order of um, the mayor of that state, but... Or that city, whatever. But um, Mayor Bloomberg, which is the mayor of this New York City, um, he tried a very random uh, method. Okay, I'd like to point out that um, Caleb is saying tear gas. Is saying? Super effective. Huh, lol. <laughs> Pokemon style. Anyways, I'm Anyways, saying that continue. Bloomberg, Bloomberg is the mayor of New York City, and he's tried various sort of um, methods to try and um, disperse the protesters away from Wall Street just completely break it up. Well, they are occupying the public space some places, so well, they're like occupying they a bridge. Well, they are a peaceful okay general to... assembly. They, there's a peaceful yes, assembly, yes. but yes, they yes, are yes. stupid in order to move from there, whatever. I, I know, Soviet, but if, they, if they're standing on a bridge that goes out of New York and no one can get out of New York because they occupy the bloody bridge, then get them off the bridge so people can get out of New York. Or I'm saying reason is, with them, ask them to move... I mean, it doesn't take a genius. I mean, I even think an American policeman will figure out, just talk to them for a second and say, move over there a bit. So, well, uh, I'm saying is that when the protesters were at uh, a patch of grass in a park and they set up tent and pitch tent, they pitched a tent and basically set up what they needed to set up. And they didn't do anything. They weren't trashing the place. You know, it was peaceful and the mayor said, "Well, you, you you better clean this park." And they did clean the park, and then the, he's tried other methods trying to disperse the protesters from the park or whatever. He's basically trying to break up the movement, and you know, yeah, he's well, do all various of this pay for his salary, really. These, these police, um, the, how I see the police in New York, they show their true colours. They are working for the one percent. They are basically slaves to one percent. I, 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 from the tone I am speaking of, I'm on behalf of the protests. I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm, you know, I, I advocate to their, you know, the movement really. I nearly went to our occupation of London, uh, but the police have showed their true colours, in a way. Yeah. Maybe the, yeah. maybe the, uh, the, the police chief probably has ordered them to, you know. By, I, I think by like twelve by protesters, really. Well, I think there's like a, I think there's a total of twelve occupiers in the entire Denmark, so we're pretty safe. <laughs> that was uh, oh, well, uh, that wasn't going well for you then. <laughs> but uh, you can uh, see. Okay. Caleb's saying uh, they're just doing their job. They're being ordered around. They don't make the decision for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, but well, they also true, really but the end of the day. In the day, the police are losing their jobs as well, and they got nothing. But basically, they're gonna have, they're a part of the ninety-nine percent, and uh, they're gonna have to look at it two ways: they either do nothing, or they go out on the streets and protest with you know, amongst the other protesters. They have been police lose you know, people uh, are laid back, getting new jobs and that, and uh, you know, the police seem to not. They seem to they like the middle class. Like the middle class think they're like the rich or something, they want to go up there to the upper strata, you know, but they're not. They're getting, they're shrinking, they're shrinking down into work class. Basically, what the police are trying to do, they think they're part of the one percent. They're not. They've been ordered by the one percent, you know, to go violently on the uh, protesters and that. At the end of the day, they're ninety nine percent, and they'll be fucked over by whoever. Really depends on the economic situation, but actually, I'd like to uh, kind of point out a. Uh, um 
um, a little uh, statistic I saw in the newspaper and related to my the city I live in, Toronto. Um, they're showing kind of the wealth distribution of uh, how it's changed from um, 1970 to 2005, and then the projected wealth uh, in uh, 2030. Um, in 1970, it was about 66% were the middle class, about 1% were, were considered ultra rich, and then every, and then it was kind of dispersed, for, and then like 1% was ultra poor, and, and the other two was just kind of whatever remains of the, uh, 68%, uh, or sorry, the, the population. But hang on, hang on. Actually, what they're showing is that the middle class is disappearing, um, Super rich are going to rise to 18%, but the um, super poor is going to rise to 30%. So we're actually, they're going against, it, 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 I think it should be not like the 99%, it just kind of should be the increased gap between the rich and the poor, right? Because it, yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice that we're seeing more rich people, but we're seeing far more poor people coming out of, coming out of the middle class, and the middle class is disappearing, yeah. Yeah. It seems. It seems like that. Like what they're doing but, at the moment is we're squeezing the middle. We seem to be squeezing the middle, and most of it's flowing downwards. But then, as well, what we really need to be doing is squashing classes by sort of um, making sure that the bottom aren't too low and the top are top are about normal to sort of more middle. You, you've seen this trend. Well, uh, I don't think like. Squashing it, uh, squashing classes is the solution. But I mean, what we should be doing is, um, I think we should allow for more social mobility. Like, the thing is, in the 1970s, there's far more time. social mobility between classes, yeah. and now it's kind of harder for a poor person to kind of make it big, right? Yeah, yeah. If a person is born into a poor family, it's almost impossible to become rich. Or uh, middle class, for that sake. Wait, and back in the seventies, was social mobility was huge. I mean, you see, you see, like these super billionaires like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. By the way, I, I yeah. hate and Steve Jobs. By the way, but they were born out of and, mi- middle and then, class families, and they become and they make it huge. Yeah, they were sent to private schools, probably. Well, and actually, then well, no, rate, were just, actually, Bill, were just Gates. Smart. Bill Gates was just. Good at, he didn't good actually at get math. grades. He, he didn't get any grades or nothing like that. He actually got... Uh, kind of weird, but... But middle class, so how are you going to keep the middle class strong in that? Well, if you see unemployment and you see a rapid unemployment continuing in the country, then, you know, you're going to see the middle class strength that because small businesses are not going to... A lot of small businesses are actually um, suffered, really, from the economic... Uh, crisis in 2008 got, uh, went out, shut down and corporations uh, really struggled but as you can see if that happens then you're going to see a, a strength in there you're going to see the middle class strength into the, and then eventually we'll go into the uh, the um, lower class really, the working class uh, or the proletariat what I like to refer them to it's because, if you can see this, there's a trend that is happening where there's these two, you know, basically middle class has been destroyed and it will become a society based on only two classes and this will be the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. This is what Karl Marx pointed out. And this is these are the only true classes that are buying each other out in society. The middle class will not survive for much longer. They will either go up, some upper middle class will probably rise up to, you know, upper class or, or you know the rest of the middle class probably shrink down into the uh, you know the, the lower class the working class so hmm. now I think we should move on from this topic but uh, there's something I want so to one thing I want to ask the Occupy Movement huh? um, there's something I want to ask the Occupy Movement we know what you don't want. You don't. You don't want corruption in the system. You want better accountability for, um, for big businesses and even governments. Um, but what's your alternative? We know what you're against. But how? What are you going to? What's your action plan to solve these problems? Because that's the one problem I see. With, that's my biggest. Well, um, well, I don't see. I don't see a solution. 
they want more basically well I'll have to point out to them is uh, I, I can see they're when they go in and there's massive corruption in the country in the government and there's more criminality here as well I mean these people that are these uh, one percenters are actually should be in prison for what they've done um, and also I wasn't going to what's their goals I mean maybe they want to see more they want to be they want to be answered they 99% have a voice and they they deserve to be answered to basically the governments try and get the governments uh, you know attention but just instead actually work for the people you, you're the servant of the people not these one percent you know douchebag um the corporations it's not always about profit you know. basically uh you know, kids actually care about more people and there's a, a, a democratic tone in society it was just not really well america's not really a democracy in a way i could just say um, hold on. They aren't accomplishing anything. They are whining. This, this is what Caleb said. Uh, no, well, that's what. Why? Why are they not accomplishing anything? And they're just whining. And you just think they're like anarchists and basically causing trouble. And just whining and they haven't got. They, 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 they seriously don't have a life. They just want to go out the streets and whine. I'm sorry, I'm back. I They've accomplished on call. Wall Street, the people at Wall Street, the protesters, have accomplished something big, and that's they've actually inspired a lot of other occupations to rise up across the world. It's it's become a global issue, and it's it's attracted a lot of one percenters as well, and the governments have finally taken notice of this as well, and even the media as well, the corporate media as they even. Sorry, just sorry. I kind of, what, did I miss, what did I miss in the past two minutes? So I kind of had to take a phone call. Just explain any uh, what the initial goals are, and basically, well, I, I said that um, the protesters' goal is probably want to see a, a more democratic change into the system, or people should be answered um, to uh, by the government. The government should answer to. When I saw the signs in Rome, which is by far not the same as like if Wall Street. But the main point yeah. was uh, direct democracy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. More democracy. There's direct kind of a lack of. Democracy. So That's some of these people are seeing a very a lack of. Um, they want to be more politically involved in the governments. Mm. Yeah, I remember um, the syndicalists are uh, primarily they wrote some posters everywhere about uh, that the politicians won't represent them probably. Yeah, representing. Sorry, not representing. Um, and that they they really complained about that and said, look, we need to do like the occupiers. We said we want this, but they never do it. This is yeah. annoying. They come up with up their own plans, and it doesn't actually function very well in the end. And the I people mean, rarely have a say. Hmm. They can they can elect. They're not going to do it a liberal way, and you know, just send a complaint. They send a complaint to the government. They're not going to answer it. You got to do it either by protesting out the streets, you know, take action. Don't do it by liberal means. I, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, but um, it's it's not going to work that way. I mean, you send a complaint to say, I'll say, I'll send a complaint to David Cameron about this certain issue. He will not answer me. He will not answer me. These government well, officials, I think the off. problem with our society right now is the severe, a severe, it was something that's playing us right now is the mass political apathy. I can speak that um, for, at least for Canadians, because I actually worked with the Liberal Party during the federal election. Um, I actually called thousands of uh, homes across the country, and the thing that, sh- that, that shocked me the most was the apathy of people. People did not want to talk about uh, politics over the phone, or they distrusted politics, or they told me to F off, or um, blame me for their daughter's death, and <laughs> all that good stuff. Yeah, was, People are kind of crazy. I want to take account of that, but um, I believe that in, in the schooling system, I think you should at least learn the basis of politics. I have some interest in it. It's important in the end of the day. And if, if you're going to neglect politics or economics, it's going to backfire on you really because you 
you know, you're living at a time where there's depression and, uh, and uh, an unstable society, then you're going to be backfired in that. And it's always best that, you know, the basics of politics and what your government does and that, and they they follow it the wrong way. They're, they're, you know, leading uh, the people the wrong way. way. Right. Well, I think then politics is... It's best um, that you should get involved. Soviet. Yeah. If you ever you ever, you ever heard of the program on BBC Three called Young Dumb and Living Off Mum? Never heard of it. But any, anyway, as part of our English GCSE, we had to write <coughs> a, yeah. a review of a TV show, and basically we were looking at a review of Young Dumb and Living Off Mum, and they were some of the most ignorant and thick people I have ever heard. One of them was this lad, and he said. Oh, I hate politics. It's so boring. We shouldn't have any politics. And then, what? Another, and then another one said, <laughs> it, it, his, 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 "This was his like sort of add to how we should solve the economic crisis. Why don't we just print more money so that everyone can have more money?" Oh my! Um, are they, you? They, honestly, they were like stupid. That's what freaking like Zimbabwe did. I don't get yeah, people like actual. They were eighteen to twenty-one year olds. You, go, you, ever heard of something called, you ever heard of something called, I'm, I'm 19, right? I'm in that range, and I can say, have you ever heard of something called inflation? Yeah, inflation. Yeah. Plus, yeah, don't the value pay. of money goes down when you have more money circulating into the system, exactly. which is why it's very dangerous to print money. Yeah, but they also, Always dog, best money. they also bought dog bowls to eat out of because they were cheaper than plates. Oh, <laughs> okay. And, 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 and as well, one of them went round to the neighbour's house and asked if they could give them a lift in shots because they were so used to their mum giving them a lift that they thought if they just asked someone, they would. <sighs> okay, yeah, these people are freaking... Exactly, oh. no, I I, I Reading it, I just thought, ow, oh, ow. Oh. So are we, are we still on the occupation? Have we moved on? We're still on well, it. Um, yeah, we're still on it for a while. We're not yeah, actually, you know, so um, I'm gonna actually uh, summarize this up. I'm gonna summarize I, this up. Right, hold okay, on, sorry. Summarize sorry. It up. I, mean, I, I have a few things to say about it, but I think we should finally move on. This is only our first topic, by the way. Yeah, and it's 40 minutes long. Oh man. I was just summarize this up. Well, the movement's, you know, it's it's basically grown across the world, and you know, it's it's got more popular over the course of. Weeks now. Post- and it's you know at this point it's going it's striving it's 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 staying strong but we'll, we'll have to find out when uh, something happens and uh, to be recently there was um don't want to keep this escalating escalating this topic for much longer because we're going to run out of time uh, I'm just going to quickly say is that there was a big strike in um uh, in California and that that was really huge Oakland yeah. And uh, 10,000 people or more turned up for it. And it shows that there's, you know, a huge support for this occupation there, this movement that's growing across the world. So it's best that we should, uh, you know, keep on top of it when, you know, time to time. But, yeah, we're getting, you know, the the, the, podcast is moving on, so we won't cover our our whole topics up if we keep continuing talking about certain topics. So it's best that we should move on. Uh, is it monarchy next? Yep, monarchy is monarchy. the next topic at hand. Oh, so can, I, can I make an open hey. thing about it? Uh, go ahead. I would like to say yeah. Well, my main thing is... Let's, but you, let's, let's, let's like, um, um, Red Bull? Is yes. that your name? Yeah, Red Bull. I, I, your Skype name is Gabriel. But I know, Red yes. Bull, let's let you open up the, make an opening statement on monarchy... Basically, what I'm, I'm saying is, it's printed a lot in um, this tabloid newspaper in England called the Daily Mail. And basically, they always go on about immigration and all this, and it's extremely annoying. And they say, like, oh, we spend millions every year on these asylum seekers coming over here and working. And basically, I could say how much wrong that is, but first, we spend... And each uh, taxpaying person spends only one pound twenty four a year paid for asylum seekers for one and anyway and anyway, if they pay one pound twenty four and that's helping thousands of families, we pay sixty pence a year to pay for the royal family 
in, mm. in England, we pay we pay half of that to one, uh, less than half of that to one family, t- to compared to thousands. Yeah. So they can sit in their golden castle and think they are so much better than us. That, that's yes. my opening statement. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess from an, I'm going to say something a little controversial right now. I'm kind of a monarchist. No. Okay. I'm. I well. I'm Canadian monarchist. People apparently hate me for this, but. <laughs> okay. Well, I just like the uh, cultural aspect of it, and that's about where it ends. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is good, but it's the fact we it's pay a, for them and the bloody. Well, um, it's ridiculous that you have to pay, like, um, 60 pence is, like, that's, like, 60 cents, right, basically? Um, 60 pence, I'll, 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 you carry on, but I'll, I'll find out the conversion rate. Well, we'll pay a pence, well, like, let's just, it's, a pen, uh, a pence is, like, your equivalent of a cent, basically. Well, um, not um, exactly. It depends what, what currency we convert in, from British to American. Well, I mean, it, I mean, a pound... One pence is like um or one pound it's is nine pence basically. It's a, a Canadian dollar. It's basically a Canadian dollar. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, I think it's a little ridiculous that um taxpayers' money is actually or, only or, doubles yeah, the tax dollar taxpayers' dollar money is going Canadian. towards immigration. I think it should be great. Uh, well, I don't think Canadians are paying for the for, uh, for the British royal family, despite the fact that we, um, that you are monarch is our monarch as well, but I think it's ridiculous that you have the, I mean, you can spend, easily spend that money on other things. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Caleb, yeah, Caleb's saying a whole 60p, but at the end of the day, if you group that all together, it's a lot of money, and that amount of money could, you know, open a new hospital, and in any way, the Prince of Wales, like Prince Charles, he probably sells extortionate prices for his biscuits and everything with his organic stuff. He, he, they can make a living off that sort of thing. Well, and well, I mean, he does buy like down money in tourists, but... It's, it's still a lot of money we're paying. They should really pay for themselves. The majority of our wealth can fix everything we've, we've currently got in our country now. And what do they actually do with their wealth? There's a lot of, you know, know it's all what do they actually do with their wealth? And all that, those 60Ps, combine that with everyone else's. Where's that well, okay, money okay, going okay. to? Like, it's going towards the monarchy, but what are they doing it? For? I would like, like what, to say money going towards? A kid is bringing up the fact that the monarchs bring in tourists. This is an act. They're bringing tourism because, you know, the main thing is that they have money to cover up what they can't do as friends with a rapist. Let me state that the British castles, sorry, the French castles still get more visits than British castles despite the fact that they executed their monarchs. <laughs> Versailles gets more views. Uh, Versailles. Versailles gets 2.5 million visitors a year. Uh, the Tower of London gets 2.3. Yeah, but 2.3, Tower of London isn't the main attraction for one. And anyway, it's a museum in the Tower of London. Is. Yeah, yeah, but that disproves the fact that monarchs actually bring in tourists. They bring in it. But they bring in, yeah. For their, fa- for their foundations and that. But also for the fact that if anyone's like really fucking lo- loves the monarch so much, they will so the think... Worst thing. Uh, that's when that's a good well, point. Well, I like the monarchy. just like the cultural really? aspect of it. Yeah. And... I don't. See, well, I mean, I'm talking from the Overall, I, don't time, see, like I, I don't see any harm in keeping it. Right? Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, as long as we're not paying for it. But, but yeah, we're, yeah, we're not paying for it. Russia is up there with one percent. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm very anti. I mean, the, the royal, the royalty gets uh, in the British in the Britain's case, since it's probably most fitting in here. The, the royalty still owns the Duchies of Cornwall and Duchess of Lancaster. They get all the money from those lands. That's like a hundred billion pounds a year. Mm. Not that much. And and if they if, if they die, they don't pay any taxes, or they're basically exempt if uh, the, if their lands go on to another person to the next generation, they don't pay for it. It's absolutely free. They, if the monarchs have taxes for that, uh, you would also uh, give money for that, and you still service the debt that they, you have to pay, which is uh, another two billion. Oh, sorry, two million uh, pounds a year. But one of the worst thing is, like, let's just just see how how you find this, right? So Soviet and Burgrobro and Caleb and me. This this probably relates more to us. 
um, how would you like to think that the fact that basically um, there was a meeting um, for the Commonwealth, so all the Commonwealth nations together, during this time of economic crisis, they decided to meet together and come up with an amazing new sort of constitution. And you know what this constitution was? The fact that women could now become queen if they are the oldest heir. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> Exactly, Caleb. I couldn't give less of a fuck. Yeah, I, I agree, really. I couldn't... About the royal family. We shouldn't really be paying them about no, I think some amount of money to them. And really, why have the Commonwealth nations met up in Australia, you know, providing the Queen gets to go there on British taxpayers' money, you know, to go to the Commonwealth, and then say, hello, yeah, I'm all important, yeah, lick my face, and then it's like, yeah. why... Uh, it, was, it really annoyed me the fact that all our tax money went towards the uh, royal wedding, and they had that wealth, they had that money to, you know, yeah, walk out the road. That uh, is when the Pope came and to we wasn't and invited. We to pay for that. Keep in mind, we weren't invited to their wedding. They just people just went there, you know. We didn't get an invitation. No, no, no I mean, joined the royal wedding, but in the end of the day, your tax money went to that, towards that. Well, I mean, it was the kind of, it was. For some people, it was kind of an it was kind of an event for uh, some people that had like a huge cultural impact. I mean, um, it, it probably it brought in a lot of a lot of money for the people who paid attention to it. The world than than in England. If you ask like almost anybody in like Britain who wasn't directly in London, like the, it's like, what do you think of Royal Reading? I could care in no way for it. I, you just ask someone, what do you think about the royal wedding? I actually could yeah, care less I'm about it, but, like, I mean, the fact that, the, but the fact of the matter is, it, had like, it, it does have a significant cultural impact, so that's one, that's one thing I argue for kind of keeping monarchies. As long as they don't have very much political influence, like, I'm a strong believer in the democratic system, as I believe it, it allows for accountability. Hmm. Well, the Queen's not allowed to vote. Okay. But I think yeah. it would just just be like, I vote, just like go to David Cameron, I voted Labour, so fuck off. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not giving the Parliament to you, I'm going to take over, and then we're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be brilliant, just the Queen, like, just tell you, just like, V and David Cameron, and then just like slap Also... Him. I guess you could say another. Well, there's a good aspect towards uh, the monarchy in this country, and you could say that you couldn't really see radicalism rise up in this country. I mean, if you have uh, another, you've got the parliament and you've got House of Lords, and you're not going to see any radicalism rise up in time soon in this country because of the uh, the amount of power the constitutional monarchy has in the current government. It's really it's just. Beyond, it would be stupid to see it, think, or even come well, up with um, this assumption that the radicalism will rise up in Britain. Um, and passing laws would be, well, in the end of the day, every the last decision is you know, all decided from monarchy, whether it be various laws and stuff like that. So, uh, if if I may, but Go again, ahead. I can't. Sorry, uh, let me just continue that. But again, I can't really say that because. In, Italy, in fascist Italy, there was still a monarchy, and Benito Mussolini wasn't really head of state, but you know, yeah, he managed to get the power. So Whatever I guess you know, Italian monarch. Huh? Whatever happened to the Italian monarchy? Uh, he it, got, it's still he around, got right? thrown out. He got thrown out as soon as the uh, Italians became independent it's again. They said, "We want a mon- We don't want a monarch. Go out." Oh, I thought <laughs> uh, Berlusconi was prime minister. Therefore, it should be. No, oh, he's the president. How can oh, okay, he sit in power anyway so long? Uh, oh, is oh, oh, this is something. <laughs> oh, this is something I'm good at. Um, basically, the Italians have a system that says you don't need more than two. You need don't need more than two percent of the votes to become a party. While in Britain, you have to get more than two percent of the votes to go in parliament. That's not the case in Italy. So um, there's like a thousand small parties in uh, Italy, each from one different party. So Berlusconi can. A bribe and um, oh, he's gonna bribe get a and threat hope. and kill everyone who isn't on his side because he's fucking rich and he that's about it. Rape small the only way he's corrupted his way. Yes, corrupt. Italy's probably the most corrupted country in Europe, and I mean Western and Central Europe, not Eastern Europe. Uh. So 
Oh, yeah. He's going to be anyway, funding um, the campaign. Yeah. Should we do a closing statement for this, then? Yeah. No. Um, my, big, my biggest problem with the monarchy, monarchy is it, it's basically a, you basically tell the UN we are in, in this country that everyone's equal. Some people are born superior to others. Yeah. Yeah, that is. But at the end of the day, as. If you think about it in the heart, yeah. You go into debt for a bit. And you'll I mean, everyone has about a right the monarchy. To you would say that we are kind of slaves to this monarchy in some well, way. Like, my point is basically everyone has the right to vote except the Queen. Mm. That's not a problem. Oh, prisoners. Yeah, but prisoners well, are kind of like entrapped, country. like, in. Even though some people say pris- prisoners should vote. No. The, then, then, then we'll probably get a prisons people's party and they'll get 90% of the votes in the US. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, should we do a closing statement, someone? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'd like to say for the monarchy, so I'd like to see them disband. Uh, I don't know if a kind of topic like this will happen in any time soon. But I'd like to see the monarchy disband completely gone. Non-existent. We're nearing the uh, that side, and there should be more democratic. Yeah. We're nearing the 50 minutes mark. Just so you know, should we end it at one hour or? Well, you? we got like four more topics to talk exactly. about. Exactly. So should we break it down and just add like one more topic to discuss? Or? Yeah, just one Is more topic. Everyone vote either Libya, the Middle East, Greece, or Iran. Iran. Let's talk about Iran. Libya. Yeah, let's talk about Iran. Iran. Okay. All right then. Uh, why not? <laughs> Who wants to have an opening statement? I watched some interview on Akhmud Amogibo Jab recently. I'd like I was to say, say that in that case. <laughs> wait, wait, I just want to say that um, this is uh, from a uh, reporter who calls uh, Free Zakaryev. He has a show on CNN called uh, GPS, right? Or yeah. Global Public Square. Um, he did like a one hour interview with uh, Akhmud Amogibo Jab and um, the president of Iran, and he was just like, um, Let's put it this way. When he mentioned Israel, he had a severe twitch. Not only just like a little twitch, just like he he started like twitching and started talking about how he should uh, drive the um, the uh, Zionist Jews back into the sea or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I remember he stated that the, the Holocaust never happened according to him, which is pretty fucking yeah. awesome. That's I think that's the first world leader in the world who states <laughs> that. Well, you wouldn't call him a world leader. You'd be call him a crazed tyrant of like a country that doesn't understand the world. He's not even the leader of Iran. Like he, well, he he's the yeah. president of Iran, but like he he doesn't have that much control. The um people people don't realize that they have like a supreme cleric or something that uh rules the country, but he's kind of just like the <laughs> bigger or like the fool that everyone can laugh and point at. Yeah. But meanwhile, behind that, behind that fool and this uh, extra, and this uh, cleric, something dangerous is happening. There's the uh, possibility of a nuclear arms Iran, with, who has who obviously has a radical regime. Mm-hmm. I still don't get. I, I I don't. For my views on him, he's no threat. And why is he the big threat? I mean, we've he's got, got he's some um, he's, he's uh, got almost enough, got enough he's uranium actually, to build a nuclear bomb. He's got enough uranium. In fact, he's Almost. Got, or he's, he's, got got enough, a, he's got enough uranium to even build four nuclear weapons. But I'm saying is, you've got someone in North Korea and that he's more of a tyrant, more of a exactly. a crazy ass dictator, or whatever. And that's Kim Jong Il. And he has I'm nuclear sorry. weapons. And he hasn't fired nuclear weapons. Well, he's I'm more sorry. crazy. I'm sorry to be a little more crazy than Kim Jong Il, but Kim Kim Jong Il at least has you know a bit of sense. He, I, do, I doubt Kim Jong Il would destroy the entire world. <laughs> nah, but uh, okay, you know what? North Korea is a very unstable place. Right? Yeah, well, yeah, but I doubt he fire nu- and and, oh, and uh, on another point, I doubt he has enough nuclear weapons to uh, destroy the world seven times. Yeah, but uh, Iran doesn't have that question. capability as well. I'd be destroyed though. Iran doesn't Iran, have that capability. Um, has uh, enough uranium, almost has enough uranium to build. One nuclear bomb, which is kind of or they or, or uranium. They could they could they could they could build more than that. I read an article that said they had enough uranium to build four nuclear weapons, but this was just on Fareed Zakaria. So Fareed oh. Zakaria says they have seventy. And also, uh, you know, Kim Jong Il is at least willing to talk. I know. He, I remember he was talking with Dmitry Medvedev 
about disarming his nuclear weapons, and he actually uh, went on with it and disarmed like two or three nuclear weapons. I doubt Iran would do that. I don't think it's fair that if you say, hey, North Korea, you can't have any nuclear weapons. Give them to us, America, and you know, all the yeah, other nations that are in, um, economically downturned, who are more likely to, well, just as likely to attack someone. It's very yeah, um, the thing is, America doesn't have a radicalized regime. Nor yeah, Korea does. Bad. You have Republicans. They want you have neocons for kind of that. Yeah, you have neocons and you have a control of lobbyists can actually come on in things in the White House. I don't even know, they take some of the presidents that take decisions from lobbyists, and they're crazy ass. Neocons. Why is Israel where it is? Why don't they put them, you know, like, if when Britain had a treaty, where do, why did they think, okay, what we're going to do... This is, is part of the holy peace. land, I'm guessing. Yeah, we're going to... Um, it's where the... Um, it completely, by all of its enemies, you know, rather than putting it in Wales. That would be way better. Ooh, that's good well, about. the thing is, holy um... Religious Zionism. It was put there because it was historically that's where Israel was. Yeah. Right so we could just say, yeah, we don't want you to be there, we want you to be where we can keep an eye on you and make sure you don't get killed. Whales. I think just I'll give them the whales. They would have been happy. It's going to make it nice. I think I'm one of the few persons in the world who will state that Israel has no clear legitimate claim to Israel. It's like saying that Iceland has a claim to Norway and therefore we should go conquer Norway. It doesn't quite make um, sense. If, it was 19, if this was 1948, I would agree with you just because of the massive um, displacement of the Palestinians as causing, but now this is 2011. They've been there for a long time, so therefore they do deserve to... Um, they, they, they have uh, legitimate claims to that territory. But you know what? We're not here to talk about Israel. Still Let's go back to Iran. Well, I don't think they should... Well, we could do an exchange program, send the Welsh to there. Because I know that would scare that. the Arabs. That would be brilliant. Really stupid, Eric. Sending the, Welsh to Israel, sending the Welsh to Israel would probably make the Israelis leave. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we do that? Just say, get all the Welsh together at night in big vans, promise them sheep, and then send them all to Israel. And then the Israelis would be like, why are they here? Let's go and move where they come from. And they just set, like, Israel up in Wales. And they, they make it nice. I'm not crazy on Holy Night. How dare you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You just don't believe that was... Wales should move to Israel and Israel should move to Wales. That's an interesting proposal. I think we should do that. I just yeah, want I, to do that. It's on the, it's on the table. No. Um, or, or we so should where are we? in America. I mean, in South America. Um, uh, yeah, uh, if you, if I want to be... have a look at Iran. Let's go back to Iran, which we'll get on top of yeah. um, um, I actually, I don't well, think there's any threat. I don't think there's any threat to global security. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we're already planning airstrikes there. Well, That's supposedly the... the uh, unwinnable war in the desert. This is yeah. another occupation. You know, we struggle against the Iranian government. I mean, it depends on their, the people in that country if they're going to stand up against the West. Or I, I mean, it's a bit um, edgy at the moment in, the, in that state. I mean, the people could rise up against their own government. It's, I don't really know the, the amount of support they have for the government. I will state that I don't doubt the people like it here because Denmark has a sh- Denmark has a shit ton of Iranian refugees. Um, I reckon. Oh, you're going to say uranium then? I was going to be like, really, Cedric? Uranium? Is it like coming out of the walls? No. No, so we actually have a lot of... Uh, Vietnam has a Arab uranium. World. Denmark, uh, Scandinavia generally has a lot of refugees from uh, the Arab world. So do you think um, the, if there's a war with Iran, like American or whoever, Israel pushes for war against Iran, what would you, is it just their goals to dismantle their nuclear program? Or is it an imperialistic I mean, goal? Each, they just don't want Iran to be there anymore. I, I think just think it's an imperialistic goal. Like split it up into little principalities and like give some to Israel or somewhere. They're going to do it by a regime change, or they're going to push in for to war. Like, I think it's more of an imperialistic goal, just in terms uh, uh, of the fact that Iran is really ain't a threat. We should give it, we should give Israel and the Falklands Islands. It's just blatantly obvious that. Over the years, you've seen like 
you know, Afghanistan occupied, you've seen Iraq occupied. And Studer's allied troops around all kind of, they're like encircling Iraq. Iran's isolated, it's surrounded by <laughs> American occupied troops, basically. And that uh, just America's left uh, Iraq, by the way. Oh, it's too really? actually uh, officially. Yeah, there's no more troops. Officially. There's no more oh. combat troops in Iraq. Wow. I give like oh, it oh, like oh, a. We're still out of Afghanistan. Oh, that could be soon. right. Six weeks and it all collapsed. And also, there's a. I, I forgot. I forgot which country. It's a Central Asian country. They, uh, they, they, they're going to be kicked out Turkmenistan. of their uh, military base. Pardon. I think you're talking about Turkmenistan. Yeah, so they, one of the uh, countries that are uh, kicking the uh, U.S. base out of that uh, country and replacing it with a Russian base. Oh wow! Well done That's to good. them. I mean, I mean, Britain doesn't have the balls to do that yet. Turkmenistan or wherever. Has, exactly, has the balls they're to not do gonna. That. Well, the thing is, um, we don't apparently the uh, apparently the uh, pr- the uh, president of the country is actually in favor of a uh, a proposed Eurasian. <sighs> Federation led by Moscow. Yeah, led by what Vladimir Putin's what? Oh, I know. Oh, yes, Vladimir Putin. If it was up to Vladimir Putin, he would go and kill the U.S. Army with a crossbow. Because he's that fucking <laughs> badass. <laughs> no, Vladimir Putin. No, no, what he, he, no, he'd go after them with a pink, with, in a, wearing a pink tight shirt and a dildo because he's so gay. <laughs> Have you seen him with so, all his pictures? He looks like a, looks like an extra off of Brokeback Mountain. He looks like probably the person they use for the sex scenes or something. He looks so gay, it's unreal. Um, so, what this proposal that uh, Putin came up with was uh, Look, to unite basically Eurasia. Make it uh, let's get back to wars, uh, Iran. We can talk about it next time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're getting off topic. <laughs> that picture is actually Putin hunting whales. I shit you not. <laughs> he um, hunt, he's hunting whales. I think he's just gay. Yes. Yeah, let's put it on. Ray is not I actually I'm no I gotta go now. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna have to write an essay about why we should kill the monarch, so I'll be. Well, I also have to write a fishing essay. Oh, and there's so. A Soviet just left, so I think it's actually over. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I'm back. You might have just. Nah, let's just end it now. Oh, oh Soviet's here now. Hmm? Oh. Uh, I think it's, it's just time to say goodbye. Also, Han Holy and I hasn't been speaking lately because he's speak, uh, eating some kind of German food, krauts or something. Oh, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Uh, what? Uh, this uh, is Endes. Kraftina, yes. Anyway, yep, yeah, um, so Burger Obro, you as chairman, you have to close the podcast. Looking here, okay. Um, I would like to thank you all for joining us on the first NKVD podcast. Um, have a good night and die <laughs> with a cat in your arms <laughs> and a cheeky smile grin. What a trophy! Oh, I said, actually, wait, hang on. Join me, Link, and I will make our face the greatest in Corridor, or else you will die. Oh, oh yeah. Stop. That's my closing statement. Okay. My, my closing statement will probably be faggotry for the faggot god. Israel I needs to be moved to Wales.